in the and UK. we're live. <laughs> <laughs> a moment of silence for our dead homie. <laughs> Groundhog floor, Day. My floor is going to be destroyed. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, joined by two of the coolest guys in podcasting. I'm wondering if I'm being punked live, but probably not. I say two of the best guys because, unfortunately, Gary Diaz was unable to make the show today. He wow. has a previous obligations of rescu- rescuing cats from trees in the UK. And as we mentioned pre-show, they're not called cats in the UK. They're called Skeksis. So, Gary, we'll be back next week, but until then, we have to settle for Briar Rabbit. What's going on, man? Dude, I'm actually really excited for this week. So, usually I talk about what happened last week. This week, I'm going to talk about what's coming in the next coming week. So, this week in Destiny, we had the Faction Rally. Next week in Destiny, not, not the week coming up, but like the week after, we have Iron Banner, which I'm actually really excited about because I really like Iron Banner because it's just, it adds a bunch of players to the pool of, you know, possible uh, Destiny Crucible players. But this week, there ain't shit happening in Destiny. So I'm not playing any Destiny this week. I'm going to do, every day this week, I'm going to do uh, different kinds of games on stream. And I'm really looking forward to the games that I've kind of selected for the week. And I've got a list, and I'm bringing it up right now. Um, one of them, the first one I'm going to do is a VR Battle Royale game called Standout. So imagine playing PUBG back in March when it was all buggy and shit, but now in VR. What? I'm actually really looking forward to this. Like, <laughs> you know, but remember when PUBG yeah. wasn't really that polished? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was is, pretty fucking Is it janky. polished now? I mean, <laughs> Compar- I mean comparatively, it's, it's really it's polished. So polished turd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put Vaseline so, on a turd, yeah. Like, this game, it's called Standout. It looks exactly like PUBG. Really? Um, but you play it in VR. There's some differences. Boy. Like, you actually have to, like, when... You, when you pick up weapons, you can't just hit tab. You got to actually like lean down and pick oh. up a weapon, lean down, pick up a magazine. You got to load it into your gun. You got to cock your gun, and then you aim down sights. Like the, the oh sights have magnification and everything. So I'm actually really looking forward to that. Also, I don't know if you guys have seen Bridge Constructor Portal Edition. So it's a Bridge oh. Constructor oh. game, which I don't know if you guys have ever heard of. I never heard of it before, uh, but it's like a portal themed, like Portal from Valve themed. Uh, game. I'm really looking forward to this. I actually watched the uh, Giant Bomb, Bomb, Giant Bomb, Giant Bomb. <laughs> Way to go, Briar. Yeah, Giant Bomb. Um, quick look at this game, and I fell in love with it. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then the Sea of Thieves beta comes out. Um, so we're going to be playing that. And uh, I know that uh, DCP uh, will be doing that on Wednesday night. And I'm hoping that um, we can get the Revolver crew together on Thursday or Friday to do that. So I'm 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 taking a Destiny break for a week until the Iron Banner comes out. And we're going to do just a bunch of other random games. I'm really looking forward it, to that it. That sounds uh, really incredible to me. To me, that's that's the direction that, that VR needs to go. Stand out. I know there's yeah. no chance of me ever playing that on the console. I'm sure you're playing it, what, on HTC Vive? And yeah. it's does it have full locomotion? You're able to move around that way? No teleport? Full locomotion, oh, my yeah. God. Yep. That sounds like a, a, a great direction to go for VR. Yeah, Listen, I think it's going to be a real fucking hot mess. It should be fun to watch. <laughs> probably. Well, thank God you got a PC that's capable of running hot messes properly, right? <laughs> Shit, my hot mess would be a hot mess. Wilson, how you feeling this week, brother? What's going on with you? Feeling good, man. It's been a roller coaster of emotions for me this week. Um, as we all know, um, Faction Rally wasn't the greatest success uh, that... We had all kind of hoped for. Um, there was some cool stuff to do. I ended up getting a full set of armor with ornaments on one of my characters before I lost total interest in wanting to do any of it. Um, but I have been uh, like, I want to play Destiny so much, man, and I want to play PvP, and it's just really rough, like solo queuing, going in and not being able to communicate with your team. And stuff like that. And so I've just been like kind of super bummed out, man, that I haven't been able to play some Destiny and understand why the player population is leaving in, you know, packs and herds. You know, they're just rolling out, you know, because the changes aren't coming as quick as people wanted. But I will say I've been having a lot of fun playing Overwatch. Um, there's never a shortage of players on Overwatch. So that's always Damn been right. fun. And the Overwatch League, which we'll get into, has been really awesome to watch like uh 
just yeah, like I said, we'll get into it. It's just been a really, it's been kind of a good thing for me this week. Oh man, Overwatch going, dude. I'm totally down for that. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, Would be fun. Yeah, but like I was feeling when the faction rally came out on Tuesday, like I was super bummed about it, and I kind of hopped in with uh, Briar and Gary and kind of vented a little bit off stream, and uh, it was nice because. At the end of that gaming session, I was feeling much better about the whole thing because, you know, I had friends and we were laughing and having a good time and stuff like that. And it did kind of make me realize, like, the core element of the game is friends. And there's not a lot of them around anymore. So it's it's very tricky. You you guys mentioned to me uh, pre-show that some of the, the, the premier Destiny communities are considering moving on to other games. You guys, would you guys like to elaborate for our viewers on that? Today I watched like a, lot a of video before. by Holtzman, who I do the Destiny Community Podcast with. He's like, well, it's not a whole lot for me to talk about, so I'm going to probably be doing like uh, Magic the Gathering and shit like that on my YouTube channel. Uh, Dado, a huge community leader, basically, like he's like, ah, there's just not a whole lot to talk about, so I'm going to be talking about other things. I've pretty much not done YouTube videos about Destiny in months you know, like since your test video, I, but it was it was a bad it was something. If that, I got something to say, I'll do it. But for the most part, like I can't do daily content about Destiny because there's just nothing to talk about, really. You know, unless you just want to shit on the game every day, mm-hmm. which I'm sure would make you a lot of money. <laughs> there's a lot of people it would get old really fast too. There's yeah. a lot of people moving on. You know, uh, Gathalian announced that he wasn't going to base his channel around Destiny anymore. Yeah. You know, and the thing uh, is, though, of- Wilson, is that when I play that game, I play it on stream and I have a good time. When I play it with you, I have a good time. When I play it with Gary, I have a good time. I know the PvP isn't where we want it to be at, but I do have a good time when we play PvP. I did not have a good time in Trials. That right. was fucking craziness. Like, that yeah, was, like, uh, well, we're camping. 7,000 yeah. people on PC entered Trials this weekend. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's not a lot of people. But 6,500 of which are account recoveries. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, what I am really looking forward to Iron Banner because I do think that the loot of Iron Banner will probably draw people into the Crucible. The last Iron Banner event I had a ton of fun in, so I'm hoping that the Iron Banner event is going to be a good time. I, I, I unfortunately uh, am unable to catch a lot of you guys' streams, but you said you played Trials, and it sounded like you guys got shat on. What happened? Oh. Yeah, we got Shadow. Rough yeah. out there on PC. It, it the player population is just so low. It's just like the top 1%. So you're the playing the same team base. over and over and over again. Not even necessarily, just really good teams that play mouse and keyboard way more than I do. It, so They've got the strategies that are built to win, too. And I'm not good against good people. I'm good against really shitty people. <laughs> <laughs> you're an honest motherfucker, man. Like, <laughs> I, I can throw up big scores against chumps, man. <laughs> Right? But you put it, you put me against people who know how to like you know retreat and like maximize, and I just get shit on because I'm just way too aggressive and I'm way too ADD. Right? Wilson see right. me do it. Is I just we all Wilson Wilson will be like you're all alone, Briar. You're all alone, Briar. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes like a, it's like a broken that hap- record. <laughs> sometimes that happens though because of like spawn flips. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. you were. You we died, but you didn't. So sometimes that's not even your fault. You know yeah. what I mean? That's just me being like, hey, if you, if you could make it back, that'd be cool. But like my my favorite <laughs> thing to do is just like run, rush at the enemies and try and make a big play happen. Maybe a big play is going to happen. Maybe I'm going to get shit on. And obviously, it's, there's more likely going to be a big play if I'm playing against chumps. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I feel you, Briar. You know, shit happens, man. Better luck next time. Uh, right. For for me. Uh, this this week has been a little bit different than usual. You guys know Kate and I recently completed Final Fantasy XII. That was about a week and a half ago. And uh, upon her playing that with me, we made an agreement that I would go back to The Witcher and play through that. She already completed the game. I just fell in love her. with your wife. Yeah, she she <laughs> called me. You know, she played it, what, two years ago? Two or three years? It's been a long time since she played uh-huh. it. And, uh, you know, she used to always call me a little bitch for, for walking away from the game to play Is something she right? else. Yeah, she's right. She loves right now, too, but she loves you too. Yeah, and so she, um, we're playing it now, and and the thing that's really aggravating me is we're we're about twenty three hours in. She's about an hour or two further than me because I took a nap today, and she stayed in here and breastfed and played. But um, the thing that's irritating me is I'm this far into the game. I'm like level ten, 
And I got further the first time I played the game. So I want to know what fucking game it was that got me off of all this time I spent previously in the game that yeah. made me walk away from it because it's like I've gotten so Did far. Did you buy now. it brand new? Yeah, I, I bought it new. So I mean, that was what in like the spring of 20... 2015? 15. Last of Us. Is... It could have been. I mean, honestly, you were high on the Last of Us <laughs> at the time. The last That's of what us. it was, wasn't it? You're you're busy spreading bitch bombs all over the goddamn place. <laughs> yes, I was. Bitch bombing fools. So bitch this bombing. time, right, the, the, what I'm seeing about this game is, you know, I was doing a lot of comparisons because I did play, you know, quite a few hours previously years ago to yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn. But from what I'm seeing right now, and the amount of uh, quests and side quests you could do and the degree of intricacy to each one, you, you talked about this before, you beat the game. There are so many quests, and they're not like fetch quests. You actually got to no. go and see all this stuff. I just did the Bloody Baron quest. I, I completed that night before last. And it took quite a few hours to get completely done with it, find his wife, Annabelle, and all this stuff. And I was like, this is not even a main quest? What no. is this game made yeah. of? No. It's crazy. So, it's so good. Then the Bloody Baron comes back for another quest that's, I think, almost even better, to be honest. Yeah, when he, wants to, when he wants to go capture get his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that yeah, yeah. that little arc of story telling through that particular. And, and game, you got all the stuff Baron. with Siri going on. And he and reminds all... me of um, Robert Baratheon from Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's he's a flawed character. He means well. Like I, I yeah. always feel like the Bloody Baron means well. He does. His voice but he's so it... flawed. Uh, and then it's interesting that they put you in a position too as a player to kind of judge him. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's like. Man, I don't know what to think. It's like, yeah. like I can understand why he made the decisions he made. Yeah, I mean, it but really came... I don't necessarily agree with the decisions he made, but like the the writing's so well done that you can definitely understand why he did what he did. It 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 was a perfect look, and I'm sorry, this is kind of going off into the weeds, but this was a perfect storm of of negativity, the perfect storm of bullshit that happened to this guy. Wife cheated on him. He started to make love to the bottle. You know, being very mean and aggressive towards his wife and his daughter. All these things happened. And, and the way that they unfolded after he told the, the true story and I went and talked to his daughter and heard her story. I couldn't really I couldn't really blame the guy. I right. couldn't blame the wife. I just felt bad for everybody involved. I was everybody. Like, this is yeah. A horrible, horrible. And, and the point is, I think this game is probably going to last me like two or three months. Because I've been I'm playing not kidding. It for like two years. <laughs> Same. And I then got I got it on PC and I had to start all over again. I got all the DLC, right? Yeah, I got the all, DLC, and every the, time I turn on, all the DLC pops up that I have. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be insane. The Blood and Wine DLC is spectacular. Wow, spectacular. Okay. The What's the first DLC called? The second one is Blood and Wine. I don't, I don't remember what the first one's called. Remember. Somebody on the chat will tell me. But the first one's really good. But it's a little more lighthearted. The second one... It feels, you know how when you're playing through the story, you go to like different places, like you go to like the the Viking kind of place and you go to, mm -hmm. it feels like a whole nother place. Like it's really cool. It's unbelievable. Heart of Stone. Yeah, that's right. The first one's called Heart of Stone. God damn, that game is so okay. good. I didn't want yeah, to finish so, that game. I didn't want to finish it. I just wanted to do side quests until like there's. To be no totally side honest, quests. I don't. I don't know if I can. It's. I mean, I don't want to play anything else because the story's got me. You know, I want to know what's going to happen with this character and these other yeah. characters. Yeah, so, Jennifer I mean, is very. I think a very good character as well. Yeah, for sure, definitely. So that's kind of been my week, and it'll probably end up being the next couple of weeks for me. But other than our revolver plays. And with that said, for the people who are new to the show, which I'm sure there are some out there, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash briarrabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash briarrabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at briarrabbit's YouTube channel and my YouTube channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live, the Garyless episode. Let's try to make it fun. No Gary, so it's not going to be as good as it could have been. You know, the but difference we... between a normal episode and tonight's episode is we're all going to leave here feeling good about ourselves. You know what? I'm down. <laughs> okay, USA. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, so we got some. We got we got some very important business to take care of here. We do. Yeah. And yeah, I uh, hope you guys came prepared too. Oh, I came prepared. Uh, <sighs> we have undertaken the Lunchables challenge. <laughs> uh, so each of us has gone to the grocery store or the local um, purveyor of uh, not so fine goods and picked up. <laughs> Don't piss off Wilson now. He picked <laughs> up a, a lunchable. Uh, so, uh, Beasley, what'd you get for a lunchable? Oh, so the black guy got to go first, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I got the lunchable fully loaded turkey and cheddar sub sandwich. Um, that's uploaded. Uploaded. Yeah. Wilson knows. You get your vernacular right when you're talking about lunch. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so that's a six inch, six inch turkey, turkey and cheddar sandwich. Okay. Wow. Well done. Um, I'm I impressed. also I also went with the uploaded. Whoa. <laughs> what? I'm I, so I got a little spendy at the grocery store. Yeah. It was an extra dollar to get the uploaded, but I thought it was worth it because I went with the six piece chicken dunks. Cause I'm gonna dunk on this challenge. That's what I'm saying. Damn, you guys are you guys are good. I went with some classics here. We got uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. you know, These we got classics. your uh, your ham and cheddar. You know, what Wilson, I'm saying? as opposed to going to the grocery store, had to go all the way to the fridge to get his lunchables. <laughs> you got that right. And so- we've got pepperoni and mozzarella. Oh, pepperoni shit. and mozz. And, and what you do is is you pick two at a time, so I could have pepperoni and, and ham. ham and cheddar or pepperoni ham and mozzarella so you're you creating match. like this this lunchable chimera you're yes. crossbreeding your lunchables alchemy <laughs> it's, it's as alex jones would say <laughs> creating a chimera of pig and man <laughs> or of, of t- <laughs> this is the plan of the globalists <laughs> <laughs> the global elite <laughs> so we're gonna open up these these lunchables and we're gonna give them a shot. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't understand how chicken dunks are gonna be any good fucking ice cold. Yeah, this is a poor happen, fucking right? idea. <laughs> See, the originals, I'm already into mine, uh-huh. and I'm ready to eat. We got craft mayonnaise. We got At first, I was thinking, I was thinking I got a good value. I'm like, this is a lot of food. It's heavy, but no, there's it's actually ten food ounces of water in here. <laughs> water in here. <laughs> but, a bottle of damn water. There is some Kool Aid to put into your water. Why couldn't they just give you the Kool Aid instead? They of... knew that. They knew, they, knew, they knew there was going to be a black guy who bought this, Brian. <laughs> they, <Kool-Aid>. they could <laughs> just remix the Kool Aid. Like what the fuck? Because <laughs> it's fun, Briar. I I know that at least there's something in here that I'll eat because there's Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm already going in here. I'm already mixing the match in here. Uh, I, I don't know how how cold chicken dunks are going to be any good. Like, I can't be amazing. Uh, if you talk to my kids about it, Brian, they'll explain to you how they're magical somehow. Really? You yeah. Does he eat the chicken dunks? Nova and Nina will eat anything with Lunchables insignia on it and claim it's a godsend. Really? Smart kids. So, yeah, they're going to grow up just like Wilson. Ooh, I do have some Kraft original Kick barbecue ass. sauce. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Pringles. We got, look like a hot dog bun, but you turn it over, it's a hoagie bun. <laughs> look at this shit. <laughs> So I was talking to my wife about this. I'm like, I, I might need you to microwave the Lunchables for me when it's time to do the Lunchable thing. She's like, you don't microwave it. It's supposed to be served cold. I'm like, but it's chicken fucking nuggets. You don't eat chicken nuggets cold. Never had like, fried chicken cold? Somehow, somehow I was Great. like, I was kind of disgusted by eating microwave chicken nuggets and got more, <laughs> more disgusted by having to eat them cold. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I'm dunking happened my to me. dunks. Something happened to me this week that was Lunchables related. Um, you know, we uh, we That's plug gross. our Twitter from time. We plug our. No, you're not feeling it. No, Briar. It's gross. It's uh, it's like <laughs> it's this is soggy the moment in Revolver history. It's soggy and it's cold and it flavorless. Is it real white meat chicken? I don't know if it's. Did you put chicken related. On it? It's not even called chicken. It's called dunks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put? It's named after condiment? a basketball, and it kind of tastes like one. <laughs> Did you put any condiments on it? Yeah. I got... Okay. I got the Ooh, that is... barbecue sauce. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Can I see that one more time? That barbecue sauce? Yeah, ma'am. Ooh, that is an interesting <laughs> caramel color. <laughs> this seems like something you get in jail. Not that I've been in a jail, but it just seems like the kind of stuff you get. Here's here's the thing, okay? I had we had an encounter with Lunchables this week on uh, That's social right. media. That's right. We uh, what was it? Uh, a man with no name was tweeting us and was asking about Lunchables, and I tagged at the real Lunchables, to which they responded. Um, we appreciate your inquiry. Uh, we get too many of these to possibly honor all of them. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Wow. So we pretty so much they got gave us the, the brush off. They pretty yes. much gave us the <laughs> fuck you. Mm. But that's not that's not stopping us here. Briar's case on the chicken dunks is not helping us get a sponsor. Though, however, <laughs> I'm not sure happy. isn't. I'm Look, I'm not going to come mine. up here and promote Please, vanilla something. cookies. Look at that. That yeah, I don't believe like in vanilla Oreos. See that? Ooh, <laughs> that looks. Let me see that Kool Aid again. That looks like the real shit. That, that looks. It rich. is the real shit. That's that looks like the stuff rich. Stuff from Aldi's, man. That's the real deal. <laughs> Holy smokes! I should have got something that didn't. I didn't have to build like a transformer. Now I, I literally feel like my kids having to put this damn sandwich together. But it looks okay. You ruined that water. <laughs> I put the. I put the. The Kool Aid single in it. <laughs> the tropical punch. It doesn't taste very good, though. It doesn't taste like what I remember Kool-Aid being. Tasting I don't think like there's it. enough water to Kool-Aid ratio there. Beastly, you're digging <laughs> in, man. How is it? Yeah, how's I'm still, that sandwich? I'm still thinking about it, Wilson. For for the bread to be in this box and to somehow still feel mm -hmm. this fresh, mm -hmm. I feel like it's magic. It is. Well, Pringles are good. They taste <laughs> just like Pringles. Really? <laughs> good. Name brand Pringles. Yeah. Name Bram. So this will be the first segment of Revolver Late Lunch. The, the fucking... We should have put this in casual eating or public eating category. Uh, Yo, those chicken well, nuggets are really fucking foul. I got to say, like, they're really <laughs> shitty. Like, I, I kind of pictured, I pictured them being bad, but like, well, maybe they've like adjusted the formula on these chicken dunks. Uh, you know, considering that you're going to eat them cold. No, they just taste like cold fucking chicken nuggets. Like, imagine you bought chicken nuggets two days ago, put them in your fridge, and then ate them. <laughs> like, here's, that's it. <laughs> here's the thing, all right? I feel like Lunchables, even though Briar's kind of tearing them down right now, Yeah, I feel like would be a fantastic sponsor. And this is why. <laughs> because we could partner them with Bag of Dicks to where every Lunchables Ooh, could come a with a little dick. tiny bag of dicks. I like it. Look, I got a couple of Hershey oh. Kisses in mine. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, Hershey Kisses are nice, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a nice surprise. I'd rather have a dick. Me too. Mm -hmm. I would rather have a dick than a kiss. Plus, one, Hershey <laughs> kit, one Hershey's Kiss is about eight dicks. Come on. Where's the quantity yeah. at? Just Suddenly, saying. your reports of your dick size really have me wondering. <laughs> like, measurements all off here. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the sandwich I'm done with, um, I got about three or four bites in. It, it it does taste like jailhouse food. You know, the stuff that wake you up in the morning, they give you that, that concoction of shit that looks like coffee and then the sandwich. Surprisingly, yeah. I've never been Delicious. to jail. I know. You'd, you'd never get yeah. it. These are, these are, these <laughs> are the thing, though. At 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning when they give it to you, yeah, it's delicious. It's the closest thing you have to freedom right there is that piece of toast that you can throw against the wall and watch it shatter into a million pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like you know what to do in jail, Wilson. I love it. So I just make prank phone calls on the thing if I ever... <laughs> <laughs> This is your local county jail. Prisoner name, please mount answer. Call anyone. <laughs> well, suddenly, I am very happy that Lunchables has decided not to get a sponsorship. <laughs> I gotta you say, aim, you guys aim too high, man. You do you, I? Did, you pulled an Icarus, man, and tried and flew way too close <laughs> to the sun. You know, you're going out there like, let's let's be real. Lunchables doesn't do legit food right. You know, you're not gonna have a Thanksgiving Lunchable. Maybe I would. It might be a good idea, though, Wilson. What? The originals. <laughs> Lunchables Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> the originals 
yeah right here are just absolutely fantastic it's really hard to fuck up a piece of cheese a thin slice of meat and a knockoff Ritz cracker. Maybe that was my problem. You're right. I actually I, I went too high end with my lunchable. I went with the uploaded. I should have just gone basic bitch lunchable. Mm-hmm. Should have downgraded. <laughs> I'm, downgraded. Guilty. I'm guilty too, mm. Briar. You know, I was standing in, in the local Walmart looking at these things. They got yeah. four hundred different lunchables now. Right. Then they got something called stackables underneath, which is like a knockoff lunchable. And I'm just looking. <laughs> and I was like, well, they, they got these fucking uploads. These must be for adults. It looks like a real right. sandwich. I feel it's like up- as I've grown, I've uploaded. And I want yeah. my Lunchable to upload with me. Yeah. It it's speaks up- to me as a YouTuber. I upload mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, I'm so right. So true. <laughs> well, I used to. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think Wilson uh, did take the right, the right uh, course here. He got yeah. the classic that you can't fuck up. And in fact, he got two classics. So uh, you win this first round of Revolver Late Lunch, uh, <laughs> brunch, lunch, dinner. <laughs> and so this week we got a really uh, exciting show for you guys. We, we tried to pull together some mediocre topics uh, to keep our, our fan base <laughs> laughing. And so we're going to go ahead and get started with the very first topic of today's show which is Overwatch League and its success. And this is Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson's topic. Would you like to get started? Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, Oh, that Lunchable got me like, whoo. Anyway, um, as far as I'm concerned, Overwatch League is a big hit. We've got five weeks, Wednesday through Saturday, with playoffs, grand finales, and an all-star weekend to come after the five weeks, uh, the five-week prelims, or whatever you want to call it. There's two divisions and 12 teams. Some of the best players from all over. I mean, just the best of the best. Um, As far as I'm concerned, the production value and the announcer shoutcasting is fantastically done and extremely well with like few uh, like those cringe moments that you normally get from like live video games. The production value is insane, man. It looks Uh so fucking slick and. They pulled announcers from like all sorts of other places. Like, you ca- they kind of cherry picked like the best announcers from every other kind of like community around the web. It was very smart yeah. what they did. It's really good. I mean, it kind of reminds me of you guys remember that old, um, that old movie, The Wizard? Remember that? Yeah. Oh, of it was course. Basically, just it was seminal basically just classic. A gl- yeah. It's basically just a glorified Mario 3 commercial for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Remember the kid goes up there and he's playing and everyone's all raw, oh, the crowd's going, there's lights, yeah. there's an announcer, and that's kind of what it reminded me of, but more modern, obviously. Um But have any of you guys been tuning in and do you uh do you I share the same feeling of this being a huge success? And do you guys have a favorite team? I don't have a favorite team yet. Like usually I choose these things regionally, and uh there's a Boston team and I believe there's a New York team. That are close to me, so you probably I'll kind of steer toward one of those two. Uh, but what I, one of the things I really like about the league is that they've kind of they've gotten rid of like branding, so you're not going to see like a you're not going to see uh, like an optic, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. team. Even though they own a team, what you're seeing is I can't remember are they like Houston or. There's a Houston team and there's a Dallas team and of course there's like three LA teams. Yeah, I think like there's San Houston. Fran or... I think the Optic team, the guys who own Optic own the Houston team and it's called like Houston whatever their name is. And I like that because they've branded the teams toward regional regions like you would see in baseball or NHL sports, yeah. or mm-hmm. in sports, in real sports. So that when you hopefully what happens is you you grip onto a team that like is your regional team, right? Smart also, they've kind of they've positioned it so that player contracts are a little more long term and a little more hopefully long lasting. So that like you'll see the same players on your team for the entire season instead of seeing you know mid season mid season roster changes all the time, uh, which is really interesting. The game is fun to watch. It's like once I decide on a team, like I will, I will support that team. It'll probably be Boston, but it might be New York. I don't know. We'll see. Oh shit! I gotta, I, I gotta get used to like the players, and I gotta get used to like the, the the team's attitude and all that stuff. I hate, I hate supporting assholes. 
So I, mm. I want to make sure I'm not supporting no asshole. Oh, so you support dicks, but you hate at okay. Oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true, actually. <laughs> they don't always go together. <laughs> yeah, right? As, as much as you think they would go together all the time. <laughs> Thank God I just ate. All right, so for me, I haven't had a chance to see it. I want to tell you guys real bl- briefly why. And, and this probably will explain to a lot of people why I'm not – uh, as involved in a lot of the streaming that happens with the community. My job is an hour away from my house. And so I leave here every morning at 5.30. I work, I get out of work at 3.30, and then it's about an hour and a half drive home because of the traffic. So w- normally I get home around 5 o'clock. And so, so when wait I finally... Wait a you leave for work at 4.30 in the morning? 5.30. Okay, so what time do you wake up? I get up at 5, 5.10. Oh, you're out of the house in like 30, 20 minutes? Yeah. What's your I poop do all situation my... like? When do you poop? Man, I'm regular like a goddamn clock, Briar. I, I can poop right now if I want to. Anyway, look. Well, that's not regular. If, if you poop on command, that's not <laughs> yeah. regular. Pooping that's at the magic. same time every day. Now, that's regular. My question is, do you poop before you go to work? On occasion. Do you poop before you go to work? Or do you... On, 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 More on specifically, occasion. actually, do you poop before you shower? Because that, that's perfect world, perfect day. For you, this rabbit is you poop, then you get in the shower. Yeah, well, right, and me, then you're you're clean for the day. No, no, no. see, this this Good is my go. this is my Good routine. <laughs> this is my routine, and it might be weird to some people. Uh-huh. Anytime I poop, anytime I, I get in the shower. So unless there's an emergency, wait, you poop anytime wonder, you get in the shower? God damn it, Briar! Do do, Let me tell stop? my story. <laughs> <laughs> you you piece of shit. <laughs> anyway, so. Forget the shitting, okay? Because well, Brian that's doesn't, important he shit, he man. Do, do, he doesn't so derail my little, my little... God damn it. Eat a Pringle, Briar. Anyway. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> You're waking up at five... Look, I, all I'm saying is this weekend, right, I had a photo shoot that was an hour away. I had to wake up at 5.30. And my main concern when, when I wake up at 5.30 is I want to poop before I leave the house because I don't want to poop when I get to the photo shoot, Right? Like, I don't want that kind of I don't want that kind of burden on my day. I was just curious how do you how do you I, get that shit done? You're not a coffee drinker that, either. That, no, I'm not a coffee drinker. See, that'll help, Fuck, man. <laughs> that helps. When I have my coffee. That is that no, is, no, but, that is but, the but, the pinnacle, the the point of which um, I, everything guys, else happens. <laughs> I take fiber. I take fiber supplements every day. I, oh. eat oatmeal, I eat oatmeal for breakfast every morning at work. Oh, okay. So, Any wheats? are you pooping Any at work? Quaker oats. No. Are you getting I, the paid shit, poop? Man, hey, I shit, no, no I shit wrong with home. the paid poop, man. A lot of people do shit. it. Look, I'm one of those guys. You might see me driving home and you think I just murdered somebody because I'm holding it in, okay? Shit. Oh. All right, do you have yeah. like, you, you don't like to poop in public? Are you a little poop shy? No, I'm not poop shy. I work in a, <laughs> listen, man. I don't want to go in there and, and, you know, some of these guys at my job, they get talkative. They see your shoe. They know who you are. They sit down and start asking you about shit. And you uh, say, hey, look, motherfucker. I want my new sub alert to be, no, I'm not poop shy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody clip that. Yeah, please. Please. Tweet it no, to no. Rabbit. <laughs> Damn it, bro. He done fucking flipped it upside down and spun it around. So the, the, the point of my conversation is by the time I get home, it's like 5, 5.30. Right. And you got to poop. I, <laughs> if, and if I got to poop, that's first. Sometimes I get home, I get out of the car and go straight to the bathroom. Bathroom, boom, shower, boom, uh-huh. I'm set. Yeah. But at that moment, when I'm finally done, I either go in the living room and I'll sit down and, and, and turn on the switch or I think come of the, the spring in your step all day, though. If you poop in the morning, like all day, you're, you're, you're walking throughout your day without that load on your bowels. Yeah, but. I don't wake up. And feel, I don't wake up in the morning and feel my bowels just aching to let it let it loose. No, I, I'm, no, on, a, I'm, I'm, I'm on a pretty good schedule. I usually have a bowel movement no, in it's, the later afternoon, and then I take my shower, and then I'm I'm set. That's how it normally works. We're not works. saying we wake up because we have to shit. My <laughs> body isn't like yo. You need to wake up. Or you're about to shit the bed. Literally, I, I wake up. And my body's like my, anyway, my body. You know? My body says, "Hey." time to do the daily thing you know it is like uh-huh. clockwork for me it uh, is see, like that's clockwork i gotta me. pee when i wake up i don't have to poop me too i have to pee when i, when eh, I wake sometimes up sometimes yeah. i do sometimes i don't sometimes they just both happen but uh anyway back to overwatch league <laughs> <laughs> god damn it brian <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so
there's been some interesting facts going around about Overwatch League. It, Overwatch League claims more viewers than Thursday Night Football, with an average Twitch. of two. Yes, with an average of two hundred and eighty thousand viewers per minute, with four hundred and thirty-seven thousand concurrent viewers turning tuning in for Overwatch Holy League. That's smoke. almost half a million people. Which I don't know, man. I I've read a few articles that that might be that might be bullshit. Question. But it depends on who was playing on Thursday night. Watching this That's league, no. does that has that improved your play style at all? Um, it makes you play me. Play as Hanzo, correct? I do play as Hanzo, and my favorite. I wouldn't say team. Oh, uh, my favorite team is definitely Soul Dynasty. Um, because they've Best you know uniform. skill skill level Asian man. Those guys are just. <laughs> On a that's, whole new level. I'm not. Level. That's not a. That's not a dig. That is a. That is a I'm boast. Those guys. <laughs> those guys are on some next level shit, man. Because that's all they do all day, and they get paid for it. If we yeah. had that opportunity here, to where we had, you know, like in um, Korea for when StarCraft was out, these they basically had dorms, and they had people that would serve these players all day. They'd make them lunch. They'd do their laundry. They'd say, "Hey, what do you need done?" You know, out out and about we just want you playing this game and getting better at it you know what Shit. i mean like what a dream so if we, if we had that kind of opportunity i'm sure but like um shanghai dragons are cool because hanzo dragons you know what i mean those are dope um but i'd have to say um seagull from dallas fuel because he plays hanzo is probably my favorite player right now That's a, i've been asking wilson about this all week like you've been watching overwatch <laughs> like what do you think about the overwatch so he's like not enough hanzo <laughs> that's been his answer all week <laughs> yeah yeah exactly he needs more hanzo and then when that guy came hanzo. in and got an awesome clip man and it just makes me want to play widow man because the widow you know she does her little james bond retractable you know thing goes flying yeah. up in the air gets a sky snipe and everyone just goes absolutely insane you know it's a live audience they're very um in tune with what's going on in the game and what makes a good play a good play like you know, you might see someone that just gets one pick and the crowd goes crazy. And what's so special about that pick? Well, that was their healer. You know what I mean? Now it's time to <clears throat> start now digging in on their yeah. tanks. You know what I mean? Like, and the level of play that all these teams play at is just phenomenal. And it has, to answer your question, Beasley, yes. Uh, the thing I've learned the most from it is where to, where are they all set up when players are coming out of the beginning zone? We were, me and my team were overextending way too far on a few defense maps you know what i mean wow. so that's helped us out lock down lanes a little better i see someone do a flank and i'm like oh that's perfect you know they sent their guys up them they sent their tanks up the middle genji came in on you know whatever flank from the left and it is yuji okay one or whatever he says and just starts you know ginsu and people up mm -hmm. damn so good it's I'm, really gonna find, to I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find time. It's like you know, when I get here at the end of the day, I say I got you know three hours before I get got to get ready for the night. Do yes. I want to play The Witcher? Do I want to play a video game? Or do I want to watch somebody stream? And it's always I want to play a video game. So you know what's nice about issue. it, Beastly though, is that it's it's on at night and it's on at the same time every night. So you can you can, you can kind of have it on like while you're playing video games too. You know, like it's not. And then when some, when ship starts popping off, or when like you come down to the final match, yeah, and I could stop and, and yeah, and, and tune you know, into it, it. It gets pretty cool, and especially with a game like a Witcher, where you can totally pause the Witcher. You know, like <laughs> you can just like hit the yeah. pause button, like whoa, what's going yeah. on over here? And then you go Absolutely. back to the Witcher. You know, yeah. So I'll, I'll be are, checking it out this week for sure. Well, they do like highlights and replays. You know, what I mean? I, so if you are playing a game and you hear everyone going fucking crazy and you look over, they do it yeah. like they would on football, where they're like, oh, let's. Let's check that out again in slow motion or, yeah. you know, whatever. And, yeah, and the commentary is top too, notch. Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got a question really for you guys, though. What other games would you guys like to see done in, with this kind of a format? Mm. And I'm going to say it because I can PUBG? see it in Briar's eyes right now. Briar, look <laughs> at me. I can see it, and I'm going to say it for you, all right? Actually, on three. You ready? We'll say it at the same time. You ready? Uh -huh. One, two, three. Destiny. Evolve. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> He said Evolve. <laughs> that was the biggest troll of the whole show. No, it's Destiny 2, man. I would love to see. I really, this summer, with how successful uh, the Destiny tournament was at Guardian Con and seeing the, the crowd just get so excited watching that thing, man, I really thought, like, oh, man, if, 
if Bungie could like get like some kind of competitive thing going and MLG is owned by Activision now. It just seemed like the cards were set up. Yeah. Like they finally added public mat or private matches. Oh man. It's not too late for Destiny to have like a competitive scene, but man, the... <laughs> they definitely took some steps closing. backward. They definitely took some steps backwards. Yeah. There's but a lot God of things damn, that would need to change. It's a fun game to watch. Yeah, there would be a lot of things that need to change. There would have to be some sort of true competitive mode that is interesting and people are still able to make. It doesn't have to be exactly like Overwatch, you know what I mean, where you have no. tanks and healers and stuff like that. You know, just bring it back to the old format of, I mean, not really the old format, just some format where, where skill can skilled players can shine and the skill ceiling is much, much higher and people can make good, exciting plays that people would love to watch. And it's... That's what's been kind of like <clears throat> giving me those D2 blues lately, man, is I'm watching Overwatch League and I'm like, this isn't going to happen, but like it'd be really cool if it did or it'd be cool if like they kind of inch closer and closer to that and maybe come Destiny 3, they'll finally have the freaking PvP formula close to right or something. But it's fun to hope, it's fun to imagine, and it, it would be really cool for something with Destiny like that. But I'm seeing some great answers in chat, you know, Fortnite, PUBG. Yeah, Those be I, fun. I agree with uh, with the heavy metal mama. I, I think PUBG would be great, but the only issue is, how could you, uh, you know, videotape 100 people playing the game? So they did it this watch? summer, actually. Dude, very tough. Yeah, they, they did do. it this this summer. Actually, was it at Gamescom? I believe it so. was Gamescom. Yeah, because yeah. they did like uh, loot crates to go along with it. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they basically they had a hundred computers in a room, like a big ass room, and. They were all in like these cubicles that look like cinder blocks. Like they look like it looked like a PUBG landscape where all the computers were. It was kind of actually cool. And then they were like kind of switching between like the players. They didn't they didn't do a great job of broadcasting it to be honest with you. But I think they did do a good job showing that it could be broadcasted. Like they showed that the format could work in a tournament setting and that like it could be entertaining because they had tons of people watching and. They kind of fucked up. The cameraman was bad. Like, he was just shitty. He, he just wasn't, he wasn't tuning in on the right, like, battles when they were happening. Um, but I think it could be a thing. Mm. Yeah, they have, like, a really nice spectator mode where you can view the battle and you see things that other players don't. So when a player oh, walks yeah. behind a wall, you see the outline of that player with a tag and a name, maybe a color to specify what team they're on. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Then they have an overhead map. A well with dots like corresponding colors to the team you know what i mean so they tried to lay down this like isometric view of the battle that's going on sometimes they catch cool battles sometimes they don't i think they need to have 10 spectators 20 spectators in that match and be able to flip through them on the fly like oh okay we got summit 1g uh, you know over here getting ready to make a play boom there's a spectator in pachinki ready for the shit to go down you know what i mean and they do yeah. It, with a little tweaking, it can be done. And let's be honest, everybody rarely cares about the first 10 50, minutes of the match. 50 kills, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's just fucking chaos and RNG. And like, I mean, there are some interesting encounters, don't get me wrong. Those are some of my personal favorite encounters is when you're first dropping in and you're just. That's one of the reasons I like, to, I like to play with you so much is because you like to get it spicy right at the get go. Mm, it's fun, I do. you know. Like it's 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 fun to drop into a hot zone and start <laughs> fucking murdering right away. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the cat shits on you. Sometimes you shit on, shit on the cat. You know, you never know which way it's gonna go, but it's fun <laughs> either way. Shitting on cats is fun. I mean, it is wait. fun. Yes, winning PUBG matches is fun. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you shit on the cat. Sometimes that cat scratches your ass. You never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's true, and I, I love that going into the school or like a high octane drop zone, yeah. winning it, getting all that loot, and then moving on to the next high. Those are really interesting to watch, man, live. And they do a lot of really cool charity events too, where they bring in a lot of big streamers and you know raise money for a good cause. So I mean, I'd like to see more of that, like more charity event streams and things like that, because people go fucking <laughs> ham with donating for those things, and I love it. Yeah. You know what was it? Uh, AGDQ raised. Like 2.5 million dollars or wow, something really that much that's amazing or one point what was it 1.5 2.5 oh, let me look that up know. real quick okay let me look that up and uh i'll spit that out real quick damn that's a lot of money <laughs> playing a video game and you, and you get that much fan interaction is just fucking nuts 
I, I do highly suggest checking out that Overwatch League, though. At least just to see, like, the production values and the differences between what they're doing and what they've done, what like esports have done in the past. Like, it's it's a pretty stark difference, and I think they're they're heading in the right direction to make something really uh, lasting and and sustainable. Just right, shy so, of two point three million this 2. year. Two point three. Because they like, put they put sub only chat on, so if you wanted to troll chat and spam, you were either going to get banned or you. I mean, you had to pay for it first of all. You know what I mean? Because I mean, let's be real, the chat is always a freaking mess for that. Um, <clears throat> so they put it on uh, sub only chat. Some people thought that was a bad move, and I think this is one of their most successful years. So it was at their bits and um donation regular donations and sub sub money 2.3 huge success i'd like to make a quick announcement for people watching that's about as professional as this episode is going to get because the rest of the topics are completely insane bad shit uh, crazy topics we, we got going we, on we've here. got a lot of fun topics <laughs> jerry's not guys. here to restrain he's us here. he's not here to like pull us you know, back he's like before every no, show no, no, gary don't says do that. don't do that boys no 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 you can't do that <laughs> Let's bunt. Let's bunt. You can't hit a home run every show. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to fucking hit a home run today. No Diaz. Save Hashtag some of no your Diaz. That English dignity. <laughs> <laughs> we got no uh, dignity tonight. We're going for it. We're going fucking balls to the wall. Boys the first. very next episode is Mary Fuck Kill. Yes. <laughs> of course, this 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 was a topic submitted by the Briar Rabbit. Yeah, and- let me bring it up. This is a little bit different than what we've done before with kind of Mary Fuck Kill. He yeah. has a plethora. <laughs> I got some options. I got some options. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't tie us to just one. One. Uh, yeah. The first one is going to be. It's kind of like a speed round of Mary Fuck Kill. So and, I'm gonna... and I want. I want everybody in the comments to write your answer too in the comments yes, here absolutely. on Twitch. Um, so, so the first one is the YouTuber edition. So hopefully everybody's familiar with these YouTubers. Uh, the YouTubers I have su- suggested for Mary fucking kill are Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. You guys, are, I'm sure, are all familiar. Uh, Keemstar, uh, very famous, and Logan Paul, also mm-hmm. uh, very famous. Uh, so, uh, guys, Mary fuck kill Boogie Keemstar and Logan Paul. I'm God, going this, to this marry Boogie. Uh huh. Because I'm going to marry Boogie. He. It seems like great marriage material, in my yeah. opinion. He's recently coming off a divorce, so mm-hmm. he's available. He's available, exactly. Yeah. Um, Keemstar, yeah, definitely yeah. having a one night stand with Keemstar. You want to fuck and, Keemstar? Yeah, and Logan Paul, that's an easy one. <laughs> Kill him. You're out of here, dude. You're out of here. Wow. I Peace. think that this this first round is pretty easy, <laughs> and I'm going to have to go the, probably the exact same way. Logan Paul is dead, just for the shenanigans recently. Keemstar would be a good one night fuck. I'm sorry, guys. They're pulling me into this shit, so I got to answer honestly. He'd be a good night fuck because not only would you get a good fuck, you get a lot of drama with it, right? It would be just a whole bunch of information coming your way during that fuck, and so you'd probably walk out smarter. Yeah. And of course, uh, Boogie Two Ninety Eight, uh, definite marriage material. Yeah, I, I feel like you guys. Can you really see me and Boogie t- together in the bed? It'd be like two pigs fighting over a milk dud. It'd be crazy. You know. Boogie's been losing some weight. He got that. Uh, he got that uh, gastric looking bypass. Good. He's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Looking healthy. Uh, but I got. I got to agree with you. I got. I got to marry Boogie. He seems like a provider. He seems like a loving sort. Uh, I want to mm-hmm. spend my my life with Boogie. Uh, Keemstar. <laughs> definitely want. Definitely feel like it'd be a wild night with Keemstar. And uh, Logan Paul. I see no. I see no uh, uh, good points at all. So <laughs> let's just kill him. <laughs> Harry Gal forty two said. Who wouldn't want to fuck a gnome? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is the console edition of Mary Fuck mm. Kill. So we're going mm. Nintendo with the uh, Switch. We're going Xbox with the Xbox. You make it talk with Xbox and the PlayStation Four. So Mary Fuck Kill, Nintendo, Xbox, or PS Four. Uh, I would I would marry uh, PlayStation, the PS4, of course. Um, uh-huh. I, I actually have the shirt on today. I didn't even know that was going to be a topic. But I'd marry so- the the Sony because I have I feel like I have such a long history with them, and they matter so much to me. I think Nintendo would be a great one night stand. So Nintendo would be a great fuck. You know, just bring in Peach and Toadstool. Who knows what could happen there? And uh, I'm sorry, but Microsoft, the Xbox would be dead. They'd, they'd be murdered. Oh. I'm wow. going to agree with you on the Xbox front. 
<clears throat> However, I'm going to disagree with you on the Nintendo PS4 front. All right, mm-hmm. Nintendo is marriage quality. That's to bring it home to your mom. You know, it's going to be family safe. It's going to be no drama. No drama. For Everything your mama. works. Yeah. Mm. Everything. It's it's predictable. Mm-hmm. You know what it's, you get. Um, it's loyal. Yeah. Wow. It's gonna it's gonna provide it, not hide it. <laughs> Most importantly. Uh, PlayStation, though, they're they're a wild one night stand. Uh, Sony, you never know what they're gonna do next, man. You know, yeah. one minute they're doing PlayStation Move shit, you're doing all oh, kinds shit. of kinky yoga with PlayStation Move, and next thing you know, you're you're it's bondage. You're putting this thing on your head, and you can't. You know, it's you're looking around. You never know what what's gonna happen when you have a one night stand with PlayStation. Man, That's I couldn't mine. agree. I couldn't disagree with you more, Wilson. Ooh. for me. <laughs> PlayStation 4 is old study. Yeah, sure. She likes new things every once in a while. You know, she might throw a move controller up your ass every once in a while. She might want to, like, throw a headset and blind, you know, do it blind every once in a while. But for the most part, steady, steady, steady. You know? Yeah. yeah. Providing. Providing games. She's going to she's gonna give you what you need in the long haul. Nintendo, that bitch is fucking crazy. You don't know what she's going to fucking do day to day. One day she's throwing out the Wii, and you think, oh, this looks great. And then, like, six months later, you're like, this is fucking awful. <laughs> ne- next thing she's doing is throwing the Wii U. She's like, yeah, I just had this. Like, I don't want it anymore. Then she's uh, like, you never know what this bitch is doing, but you definitely got to kill Xbox. <laughs> and, 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 and Nintendo, uh, Wilson, Nintendo, you take Nintendo. There's never, like, a cheap date night. Like, you can get away with no. a cheap date night with, with PlayStation. You know, they have the, yeah. the flash sales every now and then. Things can get cheap. You might spend thirty, forty dollars, get five or six. Games. Nintendo, fuck that. They want no. the creme de la creme every oh, yeah. single day. It, they want the highest, the, the most money they can get out of you. So that, that might be uh, an issue for a long-term relationship. You bring Nintendo out, and, and Nintendo's ordering the 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 surf and turf, and like a full bottle of wine. And then she's like, "What do you want to drink?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Nintendo understands that I have a champagne taste on a beer budget. Right? <laughs> no, they know they this. Don't. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they know it. They just don't care. They just don't give you know a shit. I mean? And that's how you get someone coming back. I, I, I got I got <laughs> Pretend um, you don't care. I got to. I got to. I to uh, read out what Harry Gal Forty Two said. She said uh-huh. it. It might be true because we've seen recent uh, trailers from Nintendo. Nintendo will be putting cardboard up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't know what the fuck that is going to do. We'll see. I'm telling you, man, you, you got to come back. You got to yeah, come back. Into that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm telling you, I'm having a, a gamer identity crisis right now with all this, the Destiny 2 blues and all this stuff. I don't even know. All right, here's something that'll cheer you up. The Action Star Edition. Yeah, to very fuck kill Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, or Bruce Willis. Why is Wesley Snipes not in here? I mean, I can only pick three. Fair enough. <laughs> John Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal. No, Arnold, Stallone, Willis. Yeah, uh, those are the three big ones. Come on, okay. like none of the people you mentioned. Are, like, well, to me, to me, to me, two okay. here drastically outshine one. Go ahead, Who? Wilson. Are we wait, talking wait, like Rock? Are we talking Rocky Stallone? I, like any Stallone you want? Or any like, Stallone or Judge Dredd? Oh, like, it doesn't matter. I'm Beasley, I, I need to hear you explain yourself. Which one of these doesn't hold up? To me, you know, I'm I'm a child of the '80s, and Bruce Willis, of course, is Die Hard, but you can't compare Die Hard. To die Hard, the last on, Boy man. Scout, the last Boy Scout. You know, to me, the, the good movies, right? Uh, yeah. The Jackal, the good movies, but to die me, Die Hard like, changed action movies forever. Rambo, Commando. I mean. Just go back, Schwarzenegger. Come on, man. Even the last action hero. I, I watched all his shit, and to me, I would marry Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, um, yeah, he's because Arnold Schwarzenegger is a, a big, well, probably not as big and burly as he used to be, but he can protect you. Plus, he knows politics. Yeah, he's definitely uh, he knows, thinking his dick in something else though. Just yeah, saying. yeah. I mean, just if you have, if you have a, uh, a maid, you know, it might be an issue in the future. Yeah, Kennedy couldn't keep him happy. You can't either. <laughs> you got that right. Uh, but it's it's just Damn. something. Can you imagine watching an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? It would just be the best night of your life. Stallone would have to be a, a power fuck uh, because you know he's he's big and and you, can you imagine how bad his en- English would get during the fuck? You wouldn't understand shit he was saying. But you know he's a great action star i love his films and i gotta have some some hair so bruce willis would get he'd he die 
Wow. See, I gotta. Ouch, that hurt. As much as I love Salone, man. <laughs> I got you got like, hair where it counts, okay? Shit. I got an 86 Salone, man. There was You're a, killing Salone? Yeah, yeah, because I'm pretty sure he's. He doesn't practice safe sex. Remember that scene in Rocky where they asked him how he felt about condom, uh, condominiums? And he said, uh, I don't know. I don't use them. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good point. You got a good point. So, you know, as much as I would, would you know, like to have him with his Judge Dredd outfit on, who um, I got to 86 him. Um, Bruce Willis, he's the one night stand. He's the one night stand I've been looking for. Oh, he's man. he's the you... party. He's the party, right? Dude. That's where you go for yeah. a party. He's Bruce <laughs> he's Willis. He's the party. Arnold, I'm marrying because it's fucking Arnold, man. <laughs> right? He's the governor, dude. dude I want to be like I want to be the little spoon to Arnold's big spoon. Like and, <laughs> yeah, and like Harry, <laughs> Harry Gal's killing it. You said you can't kill Arnold because he'll be back. He'll be yeah. back. He'll be back. And, and, and heavy metal mama Briar asked, "Why the hell isn't Bruce Lee in this conversation?" Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee would have got married. <laughs> Fuck Arnold Schwarzenegger. Shit, I love Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I mean, agree. I think the Wilson's one who got lineup, away. Wilson's lineup was perfect. You marry Arnold, you fuck Willis, and you kill Stallone. That's it. I mean, and I love I Stallone. That, yeah. I love Stallone. I mean, he created Rocky. It's one of the, my favorite movies of all time. But uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> somebody had to die. <laughs> all right. Next up, we're going with the Joker edition. You gotta marry, oh, fuck, or kill one of these jokers. And we're not talking about the actor, it's himself. We're talking about his Joker. Okay? Jared Leto, Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> okay. I'll um, go first. Okay, yeah, okay. go ahead. All right. Peace no, Jack Nicholson, I'm marrying. Ooh. You're marrying. Uh, ooh, where why? did he get those beautiful toys? Yeah, where did he get those beautiful toys? Uh, I'm going to fuck Heath Ledger and I'm going to kill Jared Leto. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. Jack Nicholson's Joker for me was the seminal kind of experience of a child of the 80s when that film came out. It was just amazing to me. He Ledger is the premium Joker, but he's so fucking crazy. If you married him, you'd end up dead at some point. You would be, <laughs> you'd, you'd be dead. It's true. You know, you can't have any pencils in the house. You know, I mean, you'd be, you know, a world of trouble. A person just smiling at you while you sleep, you'd be dead. Uh-huh. And Heath Ledger was just a huge letdown. In general, what? Uh, as as to me, he was. How you know? dare you? So he killed himself, true. man. That was a letdown. Come on, when he killed himself, you weren't disappointed. Do you want to see a magic trick? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that was not the coolest fucking. It was scene a great in scene. Movie. It was a great scene. Carried. He should have come back. He should have come back. He should have not committed suicide so he could come back. I know. Right it's, the movie. it's terrible. It sucks, and that that is what makes it a crying shame. But yeah. for me, talk to me. I'm going to kill Jack Nicholson for that motherfucker kills me. Jack Nicholson yeah. ain't going to kill you. Oh, Look what he, here's Johnny. He, <laughs> no, we're talking about the Joker. Look, he danced with Vicky Vale. He danced with Vicky Vale. Uh-huh. And they danced around for a long time. He had an opportunity to hurt Batman, put on glasses, that you won't hit a guy with glasses, will you? The guy's a fucking hoot to have around. He's not trying to kill anybody. If you sat and had a cup of coffee with Jack Nicholson's Joker, he'd probably cry and tell you his life story. Oh, Jared that. Leto is fucking insane. He Ledger would kill you. So oh, I mean, absolutely not. He is marriage material. He is one of the most handsome men to have ever graced this beautiful earth. And I wish I had hair like him. You Jared Leto, do. I'm fucking for sure. You make Jared Leto. <laughs> you make strong points. You make strong points. But I gotta Mark, go with Beasley. Oh. If I want to spend my life with the Joker, I want to spend my life with Jack Nicholson's Joker. He's gonna be like that's gonna be the most fun Joker to spend my life with. Any three of these motherfuckers can kill me at any point. But if I'm going to be spending my life with a Joker, taking my risk, taking my daily risk, right? Taking my life into my hands on a daily basis, Jack Nichols is the way I want to go. But goddamn, I want to fuck Heath Ledger. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, it's fucking crazy. (laughs) Crazy. Jared Leto, completely forgettable. Kill him off. I don't care. Agreed. Totally agreed. We did Joker, so we got to do Batman now. (laughs) We got Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, and Adam West. There's so many Batman. <laughs> like, there's so many Batman I could have picked, but I figured. Right. I, I feel like these three were were pretty good. So right. we got the go Adam West this? one, the 60 uh, version. Who wants to go first? You want to go first, Brian? Uh, sure, I'll go first. So, um, Michael Keaton. Uh, I'm sorry, but 
between Christian Bale and Adam West, I gotta let you go. Because I want to fuck Christian Bale Batman. <laughs> <laughs> like, Christian Bale Batman, man. Like, he's got... He's got all the sorts of fucking cool shit going on. And Adam West, I'm marrying Adam West, man. Like, he just, he's the best. He's the best Batman. He's so, uh, he's so fun. That's bullshit. No, Adam West Batman is going to be the most fun Batman. He's campy. He's going to keep you laughing. He's got a dangerous side, but he's also got a funny side. Like, that's the long-term dangerous Batman Dangerous side from the 60s does not jive well with the dangerous side for 2018. He'd lose a fight to a guard dog nowadays. How many shit. fights are you getting in, man? Shit, this is it's a fucking Batman. Batman. Like, we're not living in fucking Gotham. Batman you live in fucking South shit. Carolina. Batman, <laughs> Batman walks into a, a, a grocery store and sees somebody talking shit. He's going to get involved. And so you want to have the right Batman in that situation. Okay? You don't want to get caught unaware. Right, or get let your me ask you this. Let me ask you this. When you're driving around town, which Batmobile do you want to be seen in? Uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, Batmobile. You're fucking crazy. You want to be in the fucking 60s fucking Adam West? Bullshit. It's a convertible. I don't give a damn. <laughs> that thing will turn into a taco if I got hit by an escort. What a shit. hot topic of debate. Holy shit. I think we opened a door here. Keep it real. I'm you not marry- talking about who the best Batman was. I'm just talking about who I'd fuck, marry, and kill. I'm this telling you good. who you fuck, marry, and kill, and I'm going to make uh-huh. perfect sense. Yeah. You, you marry... Uh, Michael Keaton. You marry Michael Keaton because not only is he a badass Batman who knows how to handle himself, he's also a funny person and he has a very emotional side. So you could sit with Michael Keaton at the end of a long day of him killing people and stringing them up and saying I'm Batman Mm -hmm. and he could sit there and have a nice dinner with you and you'd never even know how shitty his day at work was. Mm -hmm. Christian Bale, great Batman. Extremely great Batman, but it's like marrying someone from another country, and if they start arguing at you and calling you names and their, you know, with their accent, like if a person, you son of a beach, and you're like, beach, that's by the sand. So if you hear him arguing at you and, and, and you get into it, he starts talking in his Batman voice, you're gonna feel intimidated. So he could use that in a, in a relationship to kind mm-hmm. of get you into a subservient situation. I feel the opposite, Beastly. I feel like if somebody starts yelling at me in a foreign language that I don't understand, that's like a free pass to not give a shit. <laughs> like, good point. I don't or even understand like what you're saying. You. I'm having a great day. <laughs> yeah. Pretend like they're not talking to you. I, I, that's not. You that's might not be really yelling I mean. at me for not taking out the trash, or you might be super excited about the shirt I'm wearing. I don't fucking know. Dang. <laughs> 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 so Christian Excellent. Bale, Christian Bale is a great Batman. That's who you yeah. fuck. But you don't want to have to deal with that. that you're mental... killing Adam West. I have to. He's just not. He's not <sighs> macho enough. I'm with if, you if, if, if I'm going to be with a, a Batman, it's going to be a Batman. You, I'm sorry. Be, you hang out sorry. with 60s Adam West, man, or 60s Batman, you are fucking all the time. <laughs> that dude fucks. Dude, you were, in the, you were Batman in the middle of the sexual revolution. Yeah, I mean. Sexual revolution? Is that a real thing? <laughs> Listen, Brian, let's, keep, let's be totally honest because we know. Once you're married, the sex life declines. Not if you marry Adam West. <laughs> it does say that the sexual revolution took place from the 1960s to the 80s. Yeah, yeah. You know who what who wasn't Batman during the 1960s through 1980s? Christian Bale. <laughs> here's here's the thing. I I don't have a strong attachment to Adam West. I didn't like old Batman. Never yeah. liked it as a kid. Was never a fan. It's too it's too cheesy for me. Didn't like it. However, I am I do love me some Michael Keaton and I think he's going to be my one night stand because I could just imagine a wild night of hard he drugs sleeps and upside alcohol. Down. Yeah, hard drugs, and alcohol. hard <laughs> drugs and alcohol in Hollywood with that yeah. guy. Like Michael yeah. Keaton knows You're right. Where to get that good good. Um, he sleeps upside down, Wilson. Christian like, Bale, I'm okay with that. When you're that fucked up, you're okay, marrying hey, Christian that, Bale. That, 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 wait, wait. You're marrying Christian Bale. Yeah, hundred percent. You are second- you're signing up for a lifetime of fucking like grumpiness and misery and like True. boredom, man. That have you seen that face? You don't even He's leave the, the fucking gorgeous- mansion. He is the second most gorgeous man to ever grace this planet. We're not talking about Christian structure? Bale. We're talking about Christian Bale, Batman. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man, it's beautiful. Oh, I would take him home to mom. We'll I see would you take- on Doctor Phil Wilson again. I just can't get him to talk to me, Doc. <laughs> and when he again? does, he's like. 
<sighs> Where's the fucking pancakes? Do- How come you don't make fucking Dr. dinner Phil. for me anymore? <laughs> don't make me go back on Dr. Phil. <laughs> How come you don't like butt sex anymore? <laughs> Happen to respond well to it. Why you gotta room. talk like that all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I told you <laughs> that fucking boy. Because he's Batman. <laughs> all right, last one. one. Last one is a uh, scumbag oh, edition. God. Mary, fuck or kill Jared from Subway, Bill Cosby, or Ajit Pai. Uh, everybody know who Ajit Pai is? He's the uh, chairman net of the neutrality SEC who, scumbag. Yeah, basically I, got rid of. I, net I know neutrality. the answer to this one. Okay, talk to me. You marry Ajit Pai because in a marriage that's compromised and you might be able to talk to this asshole and get him to change his mind on net, <laughs> net neutrality. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. You fuck Bill Cosby because at least he was fucking adults. And you <laughs> all right. Kill so you're Jared basically taking one for the team. <laughs> Boom! Right. Drop the mic. I mean, that's fuck. Right. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty solid, that's some man. Solid logic right just... there. <laughs> Hard to argue those facts. Yeah, you're right about the whole Bill Cosby thing, and you probably could. I would marry Ajit to just murder him in his sleep later, anyway. (laughs) And then Bill Cosby. God, I love you, man. But yeah, you screwed up too, and you definitely killed Jared. So yeah, I'd have to marry Bill Cosby. Take the picture of the pudding (laughs) with the Kodak (laughs) film, and then you send it in. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I remember those days. All right, I'm going to marry Bill Cosby, and I'm going to make his life a living hell. (laughs) (laughs) Frankly, I'm fucking Jared, and that's going to be a night from hell. (laughs) I'm going to do... I'm going to do some dirty fucking things to Jared. Power time, power time, power time. (laughs) And then Jeep Pie, he's got to go. He's got to go. Because he's not fucking kids... Or fucking uh, drugged women. He's fucking everybody. <laughs> everybody. He's, he's fucking the future. Man. He's fucking the future. But basically, all, all three of these should be killed. <laughs> yeah, uh, heavy metal. Heavy metal mama asked if she can opt out of this one. I totally understand. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Is, I don't know the depravity of Briar's mind coming up with that one. I'm surprised you opted into any of them. I'm. <laughs> I'm a revolver host. I'm bound by obligation to answer this shit. I'm so, not going to lie. I think you have the best answer to that question. I agree. Thank you for carrying that one. Because I yeah. was like, ooh, delicate. <laughs> delicate. <All right>. delicate. <laughs> so rolling on to the next topic, and I think this is going to spark some real conversations in uh, the comments here on uh, Twitch and even on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Could and, uh, you convince- after the show, after when we're talking to our wives. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna spark a serious conversation because mine is watching live. Could you convince your spouse to be a sister wife or a brother husband? Okay, so do you think you can convince your spouse to allow another person in the relationship? The new spouse would be entitled to all aspects of the relationship uh, and all the same as the original spouse. Uh, is your game good enough to convince your spouse to be a polygamist? So no, the answer is no. But the more answer, interesting question to me is. You ha- you're forced to do it. How do you go about it? Right? Wow. Like You've got to do it. If you would have asked me this question when I was 18, I would have said, oh, yeah, yeah, I got this in the bag. Reality like, now, huh? Two, two wives. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, growing up and realizing um, how Reality? big of a pain in the ass I am to one of them, it would be uh, an absolute nightmare. But you could be a pleasure in the ass to two if you do it the right thing. You got to be an optimist. Do you know how much work it is to be married? Do you really want to be married twice? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so All if right, you see? absolutely had to to convince your spouse, life uh, or, or death situation, life, life or, or death. death. Okay, I, I would explain to them that the love the love that I have for you is more than it could ever be for another woman, and so it's spilling out. I have so much love for you that it's spilling out of you. It's it's over on the, the sofa. It's on the table. It's love everywhere. And I want to find a place where I can direct all this extra residual love that's been piling up for the last nine years. So I met this girl named Susie. I was at Waffle House. She was an employee there. And she came and sat down and she started talking to me. And she said she saw us come in a few times and, and she's very attractive. She looks just like you. Very attractive. And uh, 
she asked me uh, how I would feel about us bringing another person into our relationship to fill it out, to complete it, to make yeah. it as it's intended to be. Someone to lighten your load. You, you don't like doing laundry? Taken care of. A person who can make the kids dinner on nights that you don't, on nights that I smack you on the ass and you don't feel like rolling over? Hey, taken care of. And this is a place that will complete me and allow me to d- direct this Ooh. residual love that's about filled our, now, it's huh? in the backyard. <laughs> to direct it to somebody else and, and do what God has ordained me to do. How do you feel about it? That's, that's my argument. If I'm dead, I'm dead. I, I think you're days. fucked. I think you're fucked. I, I know Kate is in chat right now. Kate, give us the verdict. Kate, give I'm us the convinced. verdict. <laughs> what do you think about that argument? Cause I'm not convinced and I'm on beastly <laughs> side here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really rooting for the Listen, guy. Man, I got to try. I'm literally. I, I understand that it's a life and death situation, and I've got to make my own argument in the same direction. And I feel like Beasley did not even convince me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I root for the underdog here, and you are definitely the underdog, and you're making it hard. Here, here's a better. Here's a better question. <laughs> Peanut says he asks me this question once a month. <laughs> <laughs> I say no every time. Damn it, Kate! You got to put that information out there. Shit, we're leaving it. So, what do you think you could, if if you had uh, access to anything on this planet, any amount of money, any any physical property, what do you think you could use as a ploy to get your spouse to? potentially do this money ain't gonna do it for me there's no way money's not gonna be a factor for me there's just no way my wife's gonna handle it but what what if if i approached it look you don't like going out i like going out what if i had a a going out wife and a staying at home wife so we could be married at home and then once or twice a week i go out with my going out wife no, I'm still fucked. Right. Right. The shit you just There's did no was worse way. than what I fucking There's did. There's no way. <laughs> like, At least this I tried is not fucking sugar. happening. <laughs> so my approach. Yeah, okay. And this Come is on, really we'll hard for me because I've never even considered this because yeah. I love my waifu. She's amazing. She's mm-hmm. the best. You're watching. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I would have to say I am a full-grown man-child. Wherever yeah. I walk, a mess just happens. Yeah. The house gets cleaned. I walk through. There's a tornado oh. behind me. It just yeah. it runs in the family. All right. So my ploy would be if I had a second wife, I could take the, the Ragnar approach from Vikings and just have one as a slave, basically, to do all of my chores and tone down this tornado of a mess Ooh. Ooh. that seems to happen every is time I walk Is she like a slave a to your first wife, too? Ooh. Say that again? What's that? Is she like a slave to your first wife, too? Yes, 100%. Oh, it would yeah. have to be for... I feel that's like that's how you the sell pot. her right there. Right like, there. I'm going to tell her right then and there, like, you're the alpha the yeah. alpha wife. Alpha wife. Yeah, you get Ooh. to be the alpha wife, and you get a beta wife. So you get to okay. choose what her role in this relationship is. Mm-hmm. Now, now, what if these wives like? I feel like that works the... until you go to fuck her. <laughs> yeah. so you go yeah. to fuck the beta, and then it's all fucked. It's all over right there. You come back to bed. There's glass in the bed. Knives on the dresser. Eye. I'm still getting a black eye. On, on the show, Sister Wives, this guy has I think five wives, and they all live in different homes, like in the same neighborhood. And he spends one day with each wife throughout the week. He has like 28, 29 kids. And I mean. If a woman's gonna, it's true. It really happened. You know, polygamous is real. Polygamy yeah, is a real. It's called real Utah. Deal. Utah. <laughs> Mormon capital. <laughs> I don't know. You know, and I told you guys pre-show. We kind of laughed about this thing. There's no amount of money that I could ever throw at Kate for her to agree to it. No, Kate doesn't even like right. when, when there's a movie on TV and a woman like her titties flash across the screen. She looks like I'm looking at a man. Look, if I saw a guy just grab his ball sack on the screen i go fuck kate she does that when she sees women so she would she wouldn't be able to handle it another woman me me giving her the high heart at nighttime three four nights a week five nights a week i had to visit both wives every night 
because uh, uh, I got to get it in. But um, next week, obviously. At least. Listen, all I'm saying is that my wife is plenty enough for one man, and I'm happy to have her. I feel lucky every day. To Thanks have for her. watching, Miss Miss Briar. <laughs> Hey, this is a ridiculous question. I don't know even why it was brought up. <laughs> the truth of the matter that's is... All that's, 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 that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm putting. I'm going to put my now. foot down. That's what I'm saying. I was like, man, this has never even crossed my mind before, how I would try to you know, talk her into that. This is like foreign thinking to me. This is like trying to invent the light bulb before the light bulb. Wasn't how this do you... your question, Wilson? I mean, <laughs> yeah, there, there are probably a ton of benefits to having an extra wife. I mean, say, for instance... All I see are downsides. <laughs> it, it can't be downsides because, look, if one's mad at you, you go to the other one yeah. to be comfort. No, you know, if, no, that's not how women work. They oh, get yeah, mad it, in packs. <laughs> exactly. mm. When right one of them thinks that. you're an asshole, all of them think you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at the same time. Uh, well, you know, it's it's secretly a dream that we all have. Uh, and I, I guess I'll stop asking every month. I love you, Kate. <laughs> All right, what's start the next one? That was a good a one, season. though. Easily, that was fun. Yeah, maybe start asking once a season. <laughs> once a season. <laughs> yeah, bi-monthly. It's been a fortnight, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next topic is revolver shout-outs. And this is Wilson's idea. And uh, I think it's really cool because it's been kind of sitting, waiting for us to release it like the Kraken. Let her rip, Gary's not here. Yeah, Gary Finally always stops people from putting their topics in. No, I don't mm. like that. No, no it's not no, good enough. No. no. It's you're topic an asshole, block. and you're an idiot, mm. and I don't want your topic in here. First, first <laughs> thing he does is he, he, he joins in. His hair yeah. is, a, is a mess. It's mm-hmm. a visually unstimulating. Yeah. Imagine mm-hmm. Flock goes, of Seagulls, right? You know, the band yeah. Flock of Seagulls, but, like, even bigger. Yeah. And he jumps <laughs> in. The first thing he says is, right. Which one of your stupid topics yeah. am I going to get rid of today? And then he says, yeah, he's too. and why did Wilson draw a dick in the topics? Wilson, man, another dick. I got a problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Gary. <laughs> it's all, all like right. he's fucking here. So, again, this one's kind of been on the back burner for a minute. Revolver shout outs. <clears throat> when you're not creating content, gaming, busy with real life, and you're just looking to relax on YouTube and Twitch, what are some of your favorite channels to frequent and why? So whether that's YouTube, Twitch, Vimeo, wherever the hell people are uploading content to, it doesn't matter, Pornhub, whatever. What are some of the channels that you want to shout out because you watch them and you truly enjoy their content? So like for me, on the Twitch side, one of my favorite streamers when Briar's not streaming and I'm not hanging out with Briar, Mr. Moon's house, not moon moon that plays overwatch. This is Mr. Moon's house on Twitch. This guy has the potential to be one of the biggest streamers I've ever seen and could fucking care less about it. (laughs) It does not care. Never sticks to his schedule. Just, And I'll give you a little bit of insight as to why. So what he likes to play are open world games. And he likes to, I've talked about these guys before. This is the role play crew. These are the guys that pick a character, stick to that character, and come up with some of the most on-the-fly, improv, hilarious situations in Grand Theft Auto, Miscreated, DayZ, Rust. I mean, any of these open world games um, back in the old Rainy Kings days or uh, Life is Futile before it became an MMO. Um, he is genius. He has made his, you know, how every streamer kind of has their their thing, their 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 stick or whatever you want to call it. You know, his is just being a jokative asshole to his chat <laughs> like they love any sort of attention that they can get from him, even if it's negative attention. And he is not afraid to fuck with his chat, like, at all. Like, he trolls his chat so hard. And uh, he's very entertaining. He's a cool guy when he streams. And he knows it. That's what every time he talks about streaming, he's like, I'll probably be on this weekend, and and there's a couple thousand people spamming moon promises in his chat. Like, really funny stuff. Uh, Part of that crew, um, it's called The Household. You've got Classy Packs. Thadrius, you've got 
uh, Mr. Moon's brother, Dimitri's photography. All these guys play together and mesh really well in these role play scenarios. They all did um, Star Trek Bridge Crew and role played it. So they took uh, like the captain was Moon. He just took his job way too serious. You know, was a complete <laughs> asshole to everyone and. <laughs> He kept looking over at the NPC, <clears throat> Rebecca, who was supposed to be like O'Hare or Horror, whatever her name is. Oh, and that oh, yeah. and he, and he kept her name's Rebecca and he kept going Psst, and he was waving with his hand. He was like, Rebecca. And he was like trying to call it. And she's just an NPC. You know what I mean? Like she can't <laughs> respond to him. And they showed up to a uh, they came out of warp speed or whatever. And Rebecca got on the comms and she's like. The six Klingon ships, you know, what are they doing out here? And he's like, they're about to get fucked, Rebecca. You're about to see how daddy works. Like, all this shit as a captain, you know what I mean? Like, just some of the funniest shit ever, man. These guys are just gold, and they do it all on the fly. Like, like sure, they might, you know, they set up, like, a premises behind their character. You know what I mean? That has a backstory. And then everything else is just improv for the whole night. And he does a really good job of balancing chat and uh improv um they also do a podcast uh every other friday called the household podcast where they focus on uh twitch youtube and uh just like role play news with games and stuff fantastic and uh lastly i would like to shout out uh pat country and ian ferguson on the cu podcast for completely unnecessary podcast uh pat the nes punk has a pretty big youtube channel where he mostly covers you know, retro stuff, but he is one of the top gaming podcasts out there right now, and they have some fantastic content. So those are my shout outs. Well, I may have mentioned earlier, I don't I don't really follow tons of people, especially on Twitch. I think the only people I do follow on Twitch are Briar, the kind of funny guys. Uh, and that's probably it. I'm just not I guess I'm too old. Maybe I'm, I, I just got to dig my feet in and, and start looking around on uh, YouTube. I've followed quite a few uh, video game channels for years. Uh, Review Tech USA, uh, The Red Dragon, Rooster Teeth. Uh, I did follow IGN for years, and then all that. I don't know what happened with them. I just kind of got fed up with their whole the feel of the channel. It, it to me, it lost a little bit of its real the realness of it, and it just felt so. Um, what's the term? It was just the production it felt like such a production and it lost for me what it was years ago when they first came out because i remember when ign first came out but um in my spare time when i'm not gaming you know i i i, I watch infowars i watch ha goodman uh c irvana uh, these channels on youtube that are kind of getting into alternate uh news or things that is going on that's not really reported in the mainstream media and and for or me things that's that aren't going on and they're just making shit up possibly yeah yeah that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's a possibility true too uh but for me it's like i i want to i want to get as much information as possible you know uh and, you watch and joe rogan podcast of course, of course of course that is a fantastic podcast rogan podcast man. is probably the, the it's my favorite podcast Pinnacle, probably on earth in my opinion that yeah. the the open-mindedness of and yeah. the the critical He's he's very critical and he's very open mm -hmm. at the same time. And he does not like to report bullshit. Like if he thinks you even have a hint of bullshit in his interview, he he will politely call you out on it. Mm -hmm. But like he's so down to earth that he's underground, in my opinion. Like he's so relatable. Joe Rogan is a guy you could have a beer with. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. Like he is. Fantastic yeah. podcast. I also uh, am a big fan of Colin Moriarty. So uh, Colin's Last Stand is something that I really like to follow and learn, learn as much as I can about history and um, politics because he's really big into that. And and for me, that's probably my inner circle. You know, the, the conspiracy theories, the conspiracy theorists, uh, smaller video game channels, H.A. Goodman. Uh, those are kind of where I float around at on the Internet. I wish I go ahead. I was going to say, I got a recommendation for you, man. Yeah. Um, it's called Secure Team 10 on YouTube. <clears throat> Secure Team 10. It's a lot of uh, ufology type oh, really? stuff. And the kid is extremely well. He uh, definitely doesn't... You see a lot of UFO um, channels posting very questionably fake videos just to have content to report and this kid's just got, subscribed this kid's got 1.5 million subscribers he's got gets millions of emails you know every month about you know with video and you know all this stuff and 
video of UFOs and other strange phenomenon, and he reports on it really well. So check it out, man. I think you'd like that. Yeah, that's good. that's really what I'm into. I also listen to like Corpse Husband, and some of these channels that do a lot of narration of, of horror stories and things like that from Reddit. They'll they'll narrate the story, and I'm driving to work. I love to listen to that kind of stuff. Um, Anything goes with Lex Wall is one of my favorite podcasts. I've been listening to that for years. I've been listening to him probably since 2012. And he has a podcast that comes out once a month where he goes for about an hour, hour and a half. People submit their stories in writing and he narrates it over uh, instrumentals that he makes to go to it. That's cool. And anything, anything ghost is really awesome. It's, it's very, very creepy. Whatever I miss I drive, the old coast to coast, man. Oh with, man, me too. Uh, Art Bell, you know, someone would call in and be like, I think I'm a werewolf. And he'd go, Oh my. Tell more. <laughs> yeah. You know, tell me more. He'd never be like, bullshit, click. You know what I mean? He'd always hear the, the crazy motherfucker. I think I'm a werewolf. Tell me more. Yeah. I mean, there was a guy, <laughs> there was a guy who called in years ago and told him that uh, he was a part of uh, top secret. He had top secret information about UFOs and that they were not what people thought they were and that they yeah, were man. interdimensional. I know you probably heard the call. I've been listening to Coast to Coast for guy? years. Really? Me. No, I'm kidding. Well, you don't believe <laughs> these assholes, do you? Uh, I'm not closed-minded, Brian. I, I, look, no. I don't think everybody's telling yeah, the truth. Okay. But I don't think everybody's lying. Difference between being a closed-minded and being like gullible. Well, like, there's me, there's a gray area me, between those two things. Yourself, uh, <laughs> what does this person have to gain from doing no, this? Th I don't know. Um, like, why do people fucking like? Tell you bullshit all the time. I mean, people well, because there's you something to the gain time. from it. No, no, no the reason always. why people no, hear me out. The reason why, and it doesn't always have to be a physical, tangible thing. If you, so you lie think to that guy was that, actually a werewolf? No, hundred percent. That guy was fucking full of shit. Anyway, so yeah, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> werewolves don't fucking exist. That's why. All right. Wow. Now, that's secondly, a firm stance on secondly, the anti werewolf. <laughs> back to the lie thing. The reason why there's always something to gain behind a lie, and it doesn't always have to be something tangible is because there's always a reason to lie. Why didn't you go out to dinner with us? Oh, I something really important family-related came up. You lied to get out of it. Mm -hmm. That's something to gain from it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Or you lie to hurt someone's feelings because you get off on that shit. I don't know. You know there's always something to gain from lying, in my opinion. <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me just say this Wait real quick. Like, you didn't explain to me like what the difference is between a guy who thinks he's a werewolf and a guy who thinks he's got like, so, a massive government conspiracy. So hear me out. There's definitely people that you can look at and can tell are full of shit. And mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself with some people, what does a person have to gain, to gain in the situation? coming on and basically being ridiculed like an asshole? Yeah, I think so. What's the difference, though? Yeah, I, mean, I think ninety nine percent of stories are bullshit, and people just like to lie and bullshit and troll because that's what people do. But there are a percentage of stories that don't fucking add up. You yeah, look yeah. at that. I don't that think footage. Art Bell is fucking Hold out. the filter Hold out. for that. <laughs> now, Art Bell was just an outlet. That's entertainment. He was the outlet. You know? Yeah, and it's people cool come on and tell their stories. It's cool to imagine that that we don't have everything fucking figured out like we think we do mm -hmm. because we don't. No, but, let's be real. But, you know, I, I've, like, been want, I've been wanting to say this for a second. Let me let me just get this out, Brian. You know me now for God damn it, uh, almost five years, uh, and I, over the years I may have mentioned it to you guys uh, briefly. Some of the stuff that happened to me growing up, and I mentioned it. You know, I may maybe have mentioned it two years ago, and then I quickly get off the subject because I don't like the ridicule. Everybody isn't crazy, uh, and, and sometimes things happen that are so outside of the realm of normality that you really, there is no other explanation. There were things that happened to me and my, my family when I was young that we the entire family- have stories here on the show. No, I haven't. Uh, but there, there are things <laughs> that happened. Halloween. You told us, you shared with us on Halloween a, a certain story about what happened to you back in the day. Yeah, I mean, 339 Noble in Akron, Ohio is a house where a lot of shit happened, and I don't talk about a lot of it because if someone told me the same story, I'd say, you're fucking crazy. I'd be just like Brian. I'd look, say, you're, look, you're fucking here's the thing. insane. Okay, here's the thing. I, I don't discount people's experiences and their viewpoints. However, when when Alex Jones comes on telling people how to vote because and his his reasons for voting this way are because That's the it. lizard yeah. people are fucking taking I'm over the earth. I'm 100% with you there. I'm like, this is fucking complete bullshit, and he's giving people bad advice and creating a bad outcome. 
I yeah. agree. Okay, so I agree with that. That that is that is the reason why I get critical about this stuff is because there's, there's, it, it's completely is harmless stuff. to me if if people want to explore UFOs and like geek out about it or ghost stories and geek out about it. But as soon as you got some asshole creating a situation where he's giving advice based on completely yeah, made up bullshit, minds based on bullshit, yeah, you're. Then you're I'm like, right. this is fucking bullshit, me, and me, he needs to be called out. Let me tell you the difference out. between there's a difference between the Pentagon releasing some incredible footage, <clears throat> also acknowledging how much money they spent on a project for UFOs, and then having the pilot come forward and do multiple interviews was that was the guy behind the camera about that released footage. You know what I mean? There's there's a difference between influential liars and people who just want to get a story out there. You know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like somebody like Alex Jones is in a very influential position. And some of the stuff, a lot a I, lot of the things that he says should be ridiculed. I think you that man I mean? uses but, his influence for his own personal gain. And I don't think he, he agree, believes half the shit he says. No, I don't think so either. I think he makes shit up and he's like, this is going to help me set sell fucking like buckets of fucking food that'll last for 50 years. Yeah. I don't like that shit to me. That's, that's a total scam for me. The times that I do hear a, a gem of truth on his show, I'll focus on that. It's usually a, a guest will come. I don't on think there are and, gems of truth on his show because oh, and even if there are, are, even if there are, it's buried between it's buried between 99.9% yeah. bullshit and a whole bunch of marketing that yeah. is trying to get you to buy his bullshit and vote for his bullshit and do his bullshit that I don't feel like should be supported in any way. Yeah. There are there I, are I'm other you, yeah. ways of getting like real facts out there. If you got if you got a fucking made up story about fucking Roswell in 1942, then yeah, yeah. you're going to have a hard time selling it. But if you got fucking facts and you got evidence and you're a fucking respectable individual and you haven't been doing fucking crack for the last 15 years, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> Your your story is gonna end up on fucking Alex Jones because that's the only motherfucker who's gonna buy it. It was it was 1947, by the way. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> where, where was you at 1947? Look, uh, I, th I, th I think we can all agree there, uh, and we could probably leave the, the Alex Jones thing uh, where it is. I don't. I'm not a huge Alex Jones fan. A lot of the times, I feel exactly like you, Briar. I hear a person come on do an interview, and then you hear Alex come on buy these because at the end of the world, when it's all gonna end. You're gonna to need to be fit. You're gonna need real food and real water. And you're like, says the man the who is shit? Uh, at least hundred pounds overweight. He's a fear yeah. monger. He's a fear monger. <laughs> He's a fear monger. Yeah, it's I don't, the truth. I don't buy into the fear mongerel shit. Me I don't neither. buy into the oh, this year some person said that you know a Mayan calendar dictates that shit's gonna happen. Twenty twelve. Don't fucking know when that's gonna happen. Nobody knows. Even it's, some of the smartest entities from millions of years away don't know. But here's like, a perfect. Perfect example. I, I have a, a friend at work who works with me, uh, and something happened involving politics a couple of days ago. And I, I brought him into my office, and I said, "You got to hear what's going on with this four-page memo." And so the person who had come onto the, the the channel, which happened to be Fox News, started to talk, and then the camera switched over and showed Hannity listening. And my friend said, "Oh, this is Hannity." Man, anything on this show is a lie. I said, no. I said, the person here is a senator. But basically, he's, he's set that expectation up for himself when he talks about all sorts of stupid bullshit, and he, he's making news stories up, and he's he's talking craziness. He's setting up an expectation for, of course, I'm not going to believe him if he's got real shit. Well, I don't believe right. that at all. We're on the opposite side there. No, no, that's hard to... I, I, I that's, think I'm what he's saying is, is when, you have, when you have such <clears throat> radically wild obvious bogus Bias. stories it's hard to take what if the guy actually be gets a real story yeah, serious if he actually gets him. the truth nobody's gonna fucking believe him because he's the boy who cried wolf yeah and yeah, yeah. I, there's a lot of people who believe that he's a disinformationist that he's doing that type of stuff on purpose we're not gonna get into that but the here's the last thing i'm gonna say about alex jones and i think we should leave the alex jones thing <laughs> look at his eyes alex jones doesn't the problem with Alex Jones is, is he doesn't have a friend with him when he's on his rants. He's usually by himself, and he doesn't have a friend to say, stop. First of all, you can't say stuff like that. And mm -hmm. secondly, what is your proof with said allegations? Mm -hmm. The only time that dude has remotely made any sense to me was when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and Joe Rogan yeah. will be like, hey, you can't say yeah. that shit, bro. We'll like, check them a couple yeah. of times. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, That's the problem with people like that. Well, you check them with every story, and... 
not once did Alex Jones come up with proof to back up what he was saying when he was on that podcast. Well, plus, they got him high and drunk, which is like the fucking yeah, worst really thing you could fuck fucking up. do when you're talking about. I would strongly aliens. disagree. <laughs> If you want to know what somebody's really about, you pour me a drink and we smoke a doobie, man. We talk about aliens. Sit the fuck down. (laughs) Because we're going to be there. All right. I haven't talked about my favorite YouTubers and Twitch streamers yet. So Twitch is fucking weird for me is I don't I don't actually watch that much Twitch because I'm either doing when I'm like during the day, I'm doing two things. I'm either trying to do YouTube content, getting my Twitch stream ready. I'm, I'm doing something during the day. And then in the afternoon, I'm. I'm streaming, so I don't actually get to watch that, that much Twitch during the day. If I do have time, uh, I'll, I'll pretty much keep it in the Destiny directory, but I'll kind of move it around. Like I, I like to see what, what the tenor of the Destiny community is, and I don't normally like to sit on one person for like multiple days at a time. But at night, I'm going to be completely honest, I like to watch Tafty Taft. Uh, Tafty Taft, he's got a relaxing voice, usually at nighttime. That's kind of I'm in the in the mood I'm in. I want to chill. I'm going to bed. Like Tefty Tef is just perfect. Like chill out and like fucking it's bedtime kind of thing for me. Uh, so I really like I like Tefty Tef. I love Tefty. The voice, the beard. Yeah, he's just fucking chill and he's fun. Um, he's down to earth. Yeah, he, he's really he's literally the the Twitch streamer I watch the most. Yeah. Um, YouTube is different. I'm all over the place on YouTube. I like watching hardware reviews by like Gamers Nexus uh, for PC stuff. I'll watch uh, uh, YouTube video game reviews about games I'm looking for from Skill Up, who I just actually recently became aware of. Um, I like watching documentaries on YouTube. Uh, I just Me actually too. became aware of uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, he's sort for GameStop. I was just talking to you about him, Wilson. Yeah. Uh, no clip. Uh, it's it's a YouTube channel called No Clip. It was created by fuck. I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, unbelievable documentaries he does about gaming. He did a great documentary about uh, Doom twenty sixteen, where he actually got like crazy access to uh, ID, the software developers. He's got a six part documentary about Witcher and the development of CD Projekt Red. Very interesting stuff. That's what I heard you sum. talking about when I joined the, the chat. Yeah. yeah okay. Um. Just subscribe but to him. I, 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 I subscribe to somebody based off of like one video. And then a lot of times they'll lose me along the way is because they're always talking about the same shit. And I, I just get bored fast. I get, like I could never be subscribed to me, to be honest with you. Um, really? No, like because I talk about Destiny too much. And I, like I, I like I'm either playing Destiny and I'm involved in Destiny and I'm like learning this shit for myself. Maybe I, I'll get into Maybe I'll get into like a like a, say a data like I'd get into a data video because I wanted to know like how do I do you know the vault of glass, but then like his next seven videos are about the vault of glass. I'm like, I'm not interested in this anymore. Now I want to know about this, this, and this, and this. Mm-hmm. Or like I've I feel like I have a mastery have on ADD. destiny. Yeah, I've got ADD. <laughs> like, that's what it is. You know, like <laughs> YouTube to me, the search bar is the most po- used part of uh, YouTube. It's, Same here. Like I want to know, okay, uh, how how's the what's the best way to paint this cabinet? Okay, great. Okay, what's the best how way? How do you cook to, a squirrel? I can honestly say, I don't know how to cook a squirrel. And if I was going to cook a squirrel, I would I, definitely check out I the Beastly Gamer too. Channel. <laughs> I heard it was Squirrel Appreciation Day. Is that true, it, Chad? It, yes, yes. Is that true? Uh, that's, it is. That's legit Squirrel Appreciation Day. Have you appreciated yes. the squirrel today, Beastly? Yeah, I can still remember the, the taste. It's very. <laughs> I appreciate the, the savory taste. taste of that squirrel. <laughs> um, uh, Brian, your wife posts some really beautiful pictures of squirrels and cats and dogs together. Yes. And Kate's like, "How the hell is she getting these squirrels in her house to like lay down with her cat or her dog to take these pictures?" I, like, I don't know. She's like the squirrel you know, whisperer. You know, she she's is. She's she's a fucking whisperer. Yeah, she's a fucking whisperer. You got that my right. Wife's got but, a, my wife and uh, one of my kids, too, is the same way. It's like they just have a way with fucking animals. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. That, was that like, a uh, wild squirrel that like, she had? Yeah, that was a wild fucking squirrel. How the hell? That's insane. Uh, I wouldn't even fucking touch a wild squirrel. Yeah, they, man, those teeth can you fuck you up. They're adorable. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah, pick right. one up and have it sit there all. Yeah. I don't, really, just, dude, no. I don't really do that. I don't know what this is. Sometimes it's scary grabbing written, a hamster. Man. It's got fucking like lice and bed bugs. Who knows the fuck? 
I don't want anything to do with that squirrel. You take the skin off, right? It's um, horrible. I certainly would fucking eat it. <laughs> Another thing that um that, that I just thought about, there's a YouTube channel that I'm like I'm clinically addicted to. It's called Criminally Listed. Um and you have to watch one of the videos. I'm kind of a morbid person. And I like to hear these unsolved mysteries about people being abducted or murdered or, you know, I'm really crazy like that. And the way that this um, this narrator does these stories, the, the video is usually about 10 or 11 minutes and they, they focus on two or three different situations of maybe uh, babysitter disappearances or a person who, dis- who disappeared at a lake or a body found here. It's called Criminally Listed, and they use the exact same uh, music for each video, and it's like a drug. Once you start hearing the music come on and you hear this guy talk, the way that he enunciates his words is like he's halfway asleep and he's talking like this. And, and he, But it's so different compared to every other video. I'm also subscribed to other channels like that, but if you guys like that kind of stuff, if you're morbid like me, Criminally Listed on YouTube is a great channel. So, they, so it's they, like a oh, new Unsolved Mysteries? It's very... It's very similar, I love but it's that show, man. It's, it's it can get kind of depressing though. You know, if like you watch Rescue a lot 911, of nine one one, remember that one? Rescue nine one one, unsolved yeah. mysteries. I still, the, unsolved. The, I still remember the I still remember the phone number. Mm, I think you're R- thinking Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Sightings is pretty too. good too. Sightings is pretty good. No, check it out. One eight hundred eight seven six five three five three. Was the old unsolved mysteries phone? Come on, dial that number. It says, "Thank you for was, calling the 1996 it's, line." It's in service right now. And Thank I think you for calling 1986. It's a, it's I'm sorry, a, we're not <laughs> available right now. <laughs> we have iPhones now. I think it's. I think it's a um, like a prank number now. Like you call it, and it's like, oh, you call this creepy, mysterious number, and that's the old fucking unsolved mysteries phone number. If you'd like to leave a message, too fucking bad because. Answering machines haven't been invented yet. <laughs> Dude, answering machines. We should have a nostalgic, like, remember episode. A member. Oh, a member. As long as Thundercats and He-Man win something, uh, I'll be... Who's better, Not guys? Even, like, you a decides. Just a nostalgia episode. It'd be dope. That'd be beautiful, man. Where we just talk about dope shit from when we were kids. I'm so old. How descriptive is that? We just talk about dope shit. Yeah. <laughs> dope shit. That's a, That was the... That was basically the idea for this podcast. Yeah. Just bring it, bring it something you want to talk about. Yeah. And, and <laughs> talk about dope shit. shit. All right. So, Wilson, I got the Unsolved Mysteries number here up. What did you, you say that number was? 1-800-876-5353. Damn, you nailed it. You Let's must have watched that shit a lot. Call it. Call it, call it now, Brian. <laughs> Let's see what this is. Better not get shit. me on some kind of fucking list. Here, let me do it then, because I'm already on a couple lists. Hold on. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it says if you call the tip line for unsolved mysteries there's a weird growling sound like oh, a panther yeah. phone service on this number has been suspended you call is now being disconnected I'm sorry, there's that, that's pretty uneventful wow. wow that was unclimatic damn climatic. I think, I think Alex Jones has gotten to the 911 Climat- emergency. Climatic is like um, a <laughs> really hot day. The, the turn of the frogs gay. The gay frogs have <laughs> disconnected. The, frogs, yeah. <laughs> the chemical tests that they're doing are uh, uh, turn of the frogs gay. Well, the globalists, the globalists. It's all about globalists. He talked oh about the globalists. Oh, my God, I said we were over him. My bad. He's a fun guy to talk about, man. This is this is a very fun episode. This is a great uh, episode. The, in the spirit of Gary Diaz, uh, thank you all so much for tuning in today. I'm not going to do his uh, ad read for Bag of Nobody can do com. that like Gary can. <laughs> we worked in with Lunchables a little bit. You know what I mean? I did say to our sponsor, you know, I was trying to hook him up with another sponsor. So, I mean, we did shout him out. Yeah. Uh, you guys you, definitely check out Bag Place your order and use coupon code Revolver Live. To get a discount on your purchase, get That's those right. dicks and send them to those chicks or guys. Right. You know what's coming up? Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Nothing says I love you like a bag of dicks. That's yeah, right. <laughs> if I got a bag of dicks, I'd be like, "That's a keeper." That's yeah. a keeper. That's a keeper. I mean, honestly, guys, well, do you know Christmas. anyone in your entire life that <laughs> sent someone a bag of dicks before? You know, people say it all the time. Oh, man, go eat a bag of dicks. To give mm-hmm. someone that option in real life is something. 
more magical than words that, than words can convey. I feel like uh, it's universal too. You can give it to somebody you love. You can give it to somebody you hate. Yeah, and, and they they get it. They get it. Like they love get it. And hate. You know, right? That's you a, give that's it to a, a front of me. Yeah. Mm. You know, I, I hate <laughs> you, so I'm giving you a bag of dicks. But I also love you, so they're mad out of candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. That is so great. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and for anyone who would like to uh, contact Gary Diaz, please do so on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Let him know if he was missed. Let him know if we had more fun without him. And, and let him know when you'd like him back. Uh, as I said earlier today, he is rescuing cats in the UK. They're called Skeksis. Can I tell you mm-hmm. what I think really happened? What, what happened? I think we're he bought right a on. fake bullshit knockoff UK Lunchable. And ate it early and couldn't handle it. He was it. sending like, pictures like a bitch. Picture. He did. He did actually send us pictures on Twitter of yeah. a knockoff UK Lunchable. That may have said Lunchable on it, but that was no Lunchable. That the was bread, not healthy. The bread's hard now. It feels like that was not a USDA grade <laughs> A so Lunchable. <laughs> Has USDA actually had any input on the Lunchable? I it's best not to look it. at that, Briar. Briar it's, <laughs> Damn, we'll that down. Down. I want I want you all to check out the ingredients list. <laughs> that's extensive. A, that's a long fucking list right there. Holy Nowhere on it does it say smokes. chicken. That's just for wow. dogs. Feel so bad. I don't know. I feel closer. I feel like you guys were enlightened today. You're woke to the well, lunch bowl. You know what, Wilson? Now. We got red pill today. Yeah. Hashtag bowl. woke. Woke. Red pill lunch. Bowl. And make sure <laughs> and make sure you guys let us know on Twitter what your favorite Lunchables were. We've been getting a lot of tweets from a lot of you guys late recently, and they've been absolutely hilarious, and we love it. So thank you yeah. very much. And if you guys do want to tweet me out, that's Ryu Wilson. That's R-Y-U Wilson on Twitter. Oh, I, I fucked up. I didn't even realize there was actually two different sauces in my ah, you loaded Lunchable. Up, Briar. One of them was ketchup with starch added. Ooh. Can you open that? Can I look at that? <laughs> Actually, can you open that? I want to see what color it has compared to that barbecue sauce. I'm guessing both, a maroon. Both hands in front of the camera, Wilson. Both hands right. in front of the camera. All right, you All right. tell me. <laughs> Ketchup. <laughs> which one's which? I think they both used to be ketchup and barbecue <laughs> sauce. <laughs> but New ketchup? Old they've, ketchup. They evolved yeah. into some sort of condiment that I'm not too quite fond of looking at. <laughs> it's really weird, though. You know, this has been sitting here for about an hour, and the bread is toasted now. It's, it's like you don't need a toaster if you buy these sandwiches. It's the magic of uh, minutes. It's the magic of Lunchables, man. I don't even want to magic. look at the ingredients, Briar. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think it's probably a good idea. Thank you guys for watching this week. Make sure you go and follow Wilson over on, is it still Wilson309 or you permanently changed it to Hanzo309? Well, no, it's it's at Ryu Wilson, but it's at Rezo Ryu Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Does anyone Our know name. Ryu's last name from Ninja Gun? Hanzo? Wilson. Hayabusa. Continue, Hayabusa. Bless you. Uh, Beastly, <laughs> don't forget to... <laughs> don't forget to check out Beastly's YouTube channel. He promises he'll make a video someday soon. I swear. <laughs> and follow I him at, at the Beastly Gamer. It's at the Beastly Gamer, right? At Beastly underscore underscore gamer. There's two underscores. I could I couldn't just settle for one. It's like a Pringle. So special. So special. So special. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>